We're going to talk about the sharing stage right now. But remember, visualization drives every one of these stages. So even in terms of sharing, you have to visualize what do you want? Like, what are you putting together? Are you putting together a, a book? Are you printing stuff for your wall? Are you putting together an exhibit? Well, how do you want the exhibit to look? How many photographs are going to be in it? If it's a book, how many pages is it going to have? What's the placement of your photographs on the page? That's all part of visualization. But there's a even a beginning part to visualization. Let me open this up here. So here's my book. This is the chapter on sharing your work. Now, the first thing I bring up in this chapter is you have to visualize yourself. What, what is your vision of yourself as an artist? Where are you going as a photographer? Every photographer, every great artist has a certain vision that they've kind of put themselves in and what we call they, how they branded themselves. Branding is basically, you know, the distinctive quality of a person or obviously a company. What do you think of when I mention these names? The Beatles, right? This cool rock group, you know, that legendary group. There's a brand that kind of comes to your mind, right? That's your first step with getting your work out to the world is like, where where do you want to go from there? Now, obviously, I'm not going to talk about social media very much, but that's kind of the first thing that we think of in terms of sharing your work. You've heard me say this before. I consider it really a, a fast food way of sharing. It's not like sitting down and making a great meal that's, you know, everybody's going to sit at a table and, you know, be <laughs> around a table with candlelight and, you know, the full ambiance. It's fast food. It's going to be going by really fast. So, you know, okay, fine, put it up there, but don't make that your primary focus at all. These are some tips in the book about using, you know, social media with Lightroom, which makes it handy. You should create a gallery. I have a Smug Mug gallery. I really like it. I like Smug Mug. And you put your, you know, put your best work up. I, I need to actually go through mine and update it. You want to basically, you don't have to have a million photographs. In fact, people are going to just burn out if you, I've seen these galleries and it's just page after page after page. It gets to be a burnout. So pick even your top 10 and put them in your online gallery. Keep it really clean. Um, if you get a better photograph, you can maybe pull one out and, and exchange it. But an online, online gallery is important, especially because people can order their prints from you. Excuse me. That's a big part of sharing your work. When I launched my career, you know, I launched my career as a photographer pretty late in life. I'd actually had a full career as a, a management consultant. And I thought, OK, I want to go back to connecting the dots. I did go to art school. I changed my career path. I ended up being a management consultant. And um, I felt like it was an unfulfilled part of my life. So I relaunched myself late, fairly late in life. And I you know, I made a gallery, online gallery. I started uh, uh, having shows. I got into some magazines. It was really thrilling to do that. So making prints, that's absolutely, absolutely the number one way that you should be sharing your work, which is prints, frame them, put them on your wall. And whether it's you're, you have a tiny apartment or you have a big house, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like if you walk around my house, I, I'm i the featured artist here. There are one or two other uh, artists in the house, but most of the, the prints you're going to see on the wall are mine. Okay, why not? It's your gallery. I want you guys to be doing that. And if you're not doing it, start doing it. Okay, make prints, um, get them framed. Framing, you know, just adds that je ne sais quoi. It adds, it dresses it up. It makes it formal. It makes it look like, you know, you've got a finished piece of work there. Okay. Um, so prints, 
you got to do that. I want you guys to do that. That's why I'm recommending Bay Photo Lab because they, they will make great prints for you and they're not that expensive and they have great customer service. Uh, you want to show your work? I give you a whole series of steps of how to do that. I'm not going to really go into much detail here, but what you want to do, that was uh, in the San Francisco Chronicle for one of my shows. What you want to do is basically put together, if you're going to do a show, put together your best work, you know, that represents whatever the story is that you're trying to tell. It could be a, a range of your photographs. Um, my favorite exhibit so far that I've done is this one here. And this was about my trip, and you can read about it in the book Create. When I was a high school student <clears throat> to a remote region of Mexico, I took this camera here, this camera here, it's a Roloflex, you see that? It's got two lenses. I took that with dozens of rolls of film and it was really amazing that I got inside the life of these people. Now you notice, hey, if I were critiquing this photograph, I'd say, you know, not bad. You got this guy doing something. He's not posing. This is his natural environment. This is a schoolroom. And if I look at my own photographs objectively, I'm kind of impressed because I was a sweat high school, 17 or 16 years old. I guess I was 17. And, uh, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't honed my communication skills, but somehow I managed to put these guys at ease enough to allow me to photograph them as though I'm not there. This became my new favorite photograph. There's a story behind this. The story is that <clears throat> the curator of the gallery where I was showing these, um, putting this exhibit together, had looked at you know some of my photographs and asked me, well, wait a minute, what else have you got here? And I had a bunch that I hadn't made prints of. I made contact prints. If you don't know what those are, they're basically, in this case, little square prints of the negatives. And this was one of them. I'd never printed this before. I'd never done anything with this photograph. But because he identified it, we went through you know all these contact sheets and we identified about 30 of them. He pulled this one and I, I printed it. I was like, wow, I love this print. I love this photograph. You know, he's a cowboy in Mexico. It could be... It could be the old West in California or, you know, in, in our Western states. This was, um, you know, late 60s in this remote region of Mexico. And again, he's he doesn't look like he sees that I'm photographing him. He's not he's not being self-conscious. He's not posing. He's just kind of opening up and being himself. This is Fausto. He is one of the workers and we, did, we built everything here. We, bit, we made the adobe here. My other friend who is a photographer made this door. He was quite a craftsman. We hewed the wood. He carved the, the wood here. We had some hinges. And then Fausto posed for me. He didn't really pose. He was just in the window, and I got this photograph of him. Um, again, if it was not my work, I'd say that's not a bad photo, you know. So those were some of the... Um, some of the images that I put in that exhibit. And then just find ways, once you have your exhibit, there's a lot of stuff I talk about in this chapter you should read. You want to make it really a, a, a great show. And, you you know, people come to shows, exhibits, you know, you want to serve them refreshments. Um, you, you want to make it special for them. You also want to promote your show. And that was one way I did in the newspaper this is another way, which was the gallery did this for me. You know, they printed a postcard and it had two of the prints on it and it's, you know, have, had all the information. And then they were hand addressed. This is actually, by the way, when you hand address things, people are much more likely to open it. Don't you, if you go to your mailbox and there's a hand address card, aren't you going to look at it? So that's actually a, an important thing, even hand addressing a letter. By the way, that's a really important promotional action. We forget about regular snail mail is actually pretty powerful. 
you know, if you and especially if you hand write a note or even if you type something and then write a write something on the side, it will give it more life. Don't forget about that as a promotional tool. It's it's pretty magical. OK, so you want to promote your show. You want to get it out there and then make it really special. Have work with the gallery to, you know, serve refreshments and, and make it memorable. And you look. You want to sell your work. So you want people hanging around. It's make it enticing and interesting for them to hang around. Um, what else? So last thing here, I want you to do take this sign to heart here. Beware of vampire. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to switch back. Boom. There we go. This is in my book. Beware of vampires. There are vampires out there. There's people going to shoot you down. There's people going to criticize you. Let it roll. I mean, they criticize me. They criticize my books. They criticize whatever. I get critical remarks on videos. Not from you guys, I bet. Let it roll. You know, here's the thing. When you're going to put your work out to the world, you, you are facing out to the world. And there is a small percentage of our population in any given population 20% are what we call antisocial, which means they shoot down anything that they feel is somehow threatening to them. Let it go. So this quote is attributed to Ralph Waldo Emerson. I can't promise you that he wrote it. I researched it, and I actually went to uh, an expert on Emerson. He said he hadn't seen it before, but he wasn't sure that it was or it wasn't. But anyway, this is the quote. Whatever you do, you need courage. Whatever course you decide upon, there will always be someone to tell you that you are wrong. And um, remember that. You're going to put your work out. You're going to write a book. You're going to put it on the wall. You're going to put it in an exhibit. You're going to put it online. Do it. Skip the vampires. OK, I mean, I really, really want you to take that to heart, because if you listen to them, you have bought into their BS and it will stop you from doing more work. And that's the exact opposite of where I want you to go. My intention with this show, my intention with the book is to inspire you. If you're not already doing these things, I want to inspire you to do something to get your work out to the world. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.